This episode of the Sloopcast is brought to you by the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company. Mad Canadian Barbecue Company is an Ohio-based company where they usually say our seasonings will take your barbecue from good to great. Great seasonings such as the smoked, savory, two border, and the discord. Can't go wrong with any of the great seasonings that the Mad Canadian has over at themadcanadianbbq.com. That is themadcanadianbbq.com. Be sure to check out all the great seasonings he has off to offer there. Make sure you use the promo code SLOOPCAST10 at checkout for 10% off your entire order. Mad Canadian Barbecue Company, where they have your butt covered. This episode of the Sloopcast is also brought to you by the Iron Bean Coffee Company. The Iron Bean Coffee Company is a premium small batch roast to order. That, that's that's the important, well, I mean, it's all it's all important. <laughs> roast to order veteran owned coffee company out of Toledo, Ohio. I have right here, Kyle, and sometimes people might jump on the website and they might get a little bit of a sticker shock because even for like premium coffee, you might pay $10 a bag, but know that this, can I put my hand here for scale for the YouTube people? That's the size of the bag you're getting. It's, it's good. <laughs> and by the way, it's really good. your face. It, is it? Is, is it the size of my face? Close enough. That's close enough. So right here, I have the Rider Die. And the Rider or Die is a gentle and distinctive version of a classic American breakfast cup, a Brazilian yellow bourbon coffee, superb smoothness and flavor. And I have the Unicorn. Now, what's in the Unicorn? I have no idea. <laughs> the Unicorn is kind of a mixed bag. I didn't really mean to go pun there. Uh, but it's essentially a R&D coffee. It's a research and development coffee. Uh, it could be anything. Is it flavored? Is it not flavored? I have no idea, and I haven't opened it yet, so I still have no idea. Um, if, if you're not sure which coffee might be right for you, you can buy a sampler pack. So that's another thing you can do. Uh, if you sign up for their emails, you get a 10% off uh, discount code. And you can also save money. If you do find that one coffee that's right for you, uh, you can get a discount by, subs by uh, signing up for a subscription service where they just send you the coffee. I believe it's what I haven't signed up for a, su for a subscription service yet. Uh, so I'm not sure, but you essentially... Um, I believe it is monthly. Uh, Amazon does a similar thing, uh, but you can find that. You can find a lot more. You can find some flavored coffees if that's more your speed. They have a carrot cake, a blueberry, and a mint chocolate chip. You can find all of that at ironbeancoffee.com. That's Iron Bean Coffee, America's local coffee roaster. What's up, YouTube? What's up, YouTube? How'd you like the game? You know, or as most people it sound like, how did you not like the game? Oh, man, we'll, we'll get into that. Uh, seriously, though, um, comments. What did you think of the game? Um, I think Kyle and I are, I mean, I'm going to take a pretty positive spin on it. I, I know that's that's where I'm going with it. It is Happy Valley. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, but uh, if you disagree, let us know. Uh, if you agree. Let us know, but we're, we're, we're going to take a positive spin on this game. That's mm -hmm. for sure. Um, and also make sure to subscribe. Um, tell your what, friends, tell your friends, like the video, share the video, do all that stuff. Uh, do all that YouTube stuff that we always forget to, to talk about. Cause we're primarily a podcast that just happens to upload to YouTube, but this is our opportunity to talk to you, YouTube. All right, let's rejoin our audio listeners. We've got barbecue back here. You're all invited. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? Doing pretty well. How are you, Jared? I'm doing pretty good. Doing pretty good. Um, mm -hmm. Buckeyes are 2-0. and oh. It's a good day. Yeah, uh, yeah exactly. Ohio State, 2-0. and oh. Michigan, lost Penn State lost what what else do you guys okay Clemson losing would have been great 
we'll we'll talk a little bit about that later in the show. Mm-hmm. But we unfortunately can't spend as much time on it as I'd like. But uh, yeah, we're I I I like it. I I had I had a really good Saturday again. Clemson could have lost mm-hmm. sprinkles, but the ice cream was real damn good. And my fighting bulldogs won too. Yes, Columbus Grove Bulldogs. How you guys Beats, doing? Beats Archibald. They are moving on to the regional finals. The region six. Regional the, finals. Final eight. That's final okay. Eight. Final eight. Thank you. I got yes. the the. The playoff for high school football is yeah, it's weird this year. It's real it's, weird. So it's I don't like every everybody is able to join in the playoffs, which is like weird, weird. But yeah, yeah final eight, final I eight. Feel bad for the teams that lost early because they didn't get much of a season because uh, they only had a few games. It's like, it's like six, eight games, something like that. It's not many. I didn't even think it was that much, but we're, we're not a high school yep. football podcast and we have a lot to talk about today. Yes. Buckeye, Buckeyes defeat Penn State 38 to 25 in Happy Valley. You, you, that's, that's the thing we do for the bounce back. You, you that totally is, stole yes. my thunder. <laughs> but before, but before we get into <laughs> the bounce back here though, Jared. Yeah. Uh, just a couple of updates here. Cam Brown and Blake Hubble. Uh, there you go. Both left the game uh, with injuries. Well, with Blake, uh, we come to find out as he was being um, replaced that he was dealing with some groin injuries during pregame warmups. And then when he missed that field goal, they yanked him and put in a um, walk on Dominic Demacio. Demacio? Demacio. I'm going to go Demacio. Yes, Demacio. I'll put on. Could be Demacio. I'm going to go Demacio. I. He wasn't in the pronunciation guide, Kyle. <laughs> nope. Sorry. Um, and he did okay for a walk on for for a walk on. He, he missed a chip shot. He should have just like what Blake did. But yeah, we'll get more into that here in a little bit. And Cam Brown left on a cart. Um, we don't know. signed. Hmm? We don't know. We don't know. But there's it looked it looked like. We don't know. I don't want to spread any false information. So Mm -hmm. what we're now about to say is purely speculative. Yes. What we don't know what happened to Cam Brown. Speculatively, it looked a little bit like an Achilles injury. Yeah. So I just, I want to, I want to make real sure that we're, we're not like just saying it was an Achilles injury every, because we don't know that. Uh, But that, that's just, that's kind of what it looked like. Mm -hmm. All right, Kyle, is that all the. Uh, that's I think it. that's all the news. I think the only other news we might have is that the Wisconsin COVID outbreak is bigger than expected or than we initially realized. So we're not sure what that means for Wisconsin or the upcoming Wisconsin game. I imagine that the upcoming Wisconsin game is not going to happen. That would be my assumption. Uh, but again, that's that's an assumption and that's not a thing that we know yet. So uh, with all of that, okay. Cause I don't, we, we spent too much time talking about COVID on the show. So Kyle, now it is time to get into the bounce back. Brief YouTube break. What's up YouTube. Now's your time to like crack any knuckles, get any sneezes. Oh, that was beautiful. If anyone in YouTube land does not like that, get over it. <laughs> All right. Rejoining the audio listeners. Ohio State defeats Penn State 38 to 25. And it could have been a lot worse. Could have been a lot worse. According to a lot. Could have, should have, could have, would have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And (laughs) I think Ohio, Ohio State fans, Buckeye Nation. I don't know how many of you specifically I'm talking to right now because I feel like Kyle and I really tried to set your expectations at a certain level on the Friday episode. And honestly, it felt, we felt, oh, I did. I don't want, I don't want to speak for Kyle. Maybe a little bit foolish because we were like, hey, this is going to be a game in the third quarter. The, that was a, that was our broad prediction. That was my broad prediction for the, for the game. 
that it was going to be a game in the third quarter and Ohio State would pull away in the fourth quarter. Well, then Ohio State goes up 14 to nothing and and looked easy doing it. And it felt a little bit silly. Like, okay, we're heading towards a blowout. But Penn State is still a really good football team. I know they're 0-2. We talked in detail about how they were actually better than Indiana in many ways in week one. Statistically speaking, if you go down through the stats, and of course you have to be careful with the ball, you can't turn over the ball in key situations, which is exactly what Penn State did against Indiana. Again, we talked about that in detail on Friday's episode. But Penn State is a good football team. I understand that Ohio State drilled them from the onset and that you would have liked to have seen that continue moving forward. But <laughs> that's that, that, that's a, that's a high expectation to continue that 14 to nothing pace that Ohio state had going against a team as good as Penn state. Some yeah, of you I- are, irrationally salty about this football game. Ohio state controlled a game in happy Valley against a very good Penn state team. And if you remember uh, when you listened to uh, the last episode, we talked about Penn state's defense and what they were able to hold Indiana to. It was going to be tough trying to move the ball really well against Penn state here. What was it? They did something ridiculous here. I'm trying to pull up the stats real quick here. They held Indiana to 41 total yards. And then Ohio State comes in here and puts up over 500 yards against this really stingy Penn State defense, which we knew Ohio State's State's offense is just a – and I've seen this used a couple of times on Twitter – uh, Ohio State's offense is like a Ferrari. <laughs> you just, yeah. it's, it is a thing of beauty being able to just move up and down the field. But Penn State showed that there's definitely some things that Ohio State needs to work on. Uh, it's definitely a good test these past two games with, with Ohio State going up against two stingy type of defenses. Now, now that Ohio State got these two games out of the way, it's a little bit easier path for the next few weeks here. And we'll, we'll see how, how they can continue to improve as the season goes along. And normally these two games, the first two games, it's usually typically cupcake games. How stay able to figure out, Hey, what's working, what's not working and all that. Their, their first cupcake games, Nebraska and Penn state here. Yeah. It's, not cupcakes. Not cupcakes. Absolutely. Yeah. And I think that's also important to keep in mind. I think you kind of want that game where Ohio state rolls a Mac team 72 to nothing just to see, Hey, this is what we can do, but we haven't had the opportunity to see Ohio state do that yet. Uh, Rutgers is not the Rutgers we're used to seeing. That's not to say that Rutgers is good or great or anything like that, but they aren't a complete cupcake. And we'll talk about that on the Monday episode. I I think Kyle, do you have that Ramsey tweet? I think I, I, I sent out a tweet essentially saying some of you are irrationally salty right now. That was my tweet because that's, that's I'm an idiot and that's how I speak. Ramsey, on the other hand, was Mm. saying the same thing I said, but he's Ramsey over at 11 Warriors, and he said it way better than I did. Yeah, he said here, Ohio State has won 10 straight road road games against AP-ranked teams. We're not going to talk about AP-ranked teams, but either way, it's it's an all-time NCAA record tying with, I believe, Notre Dame back in like the 50s. Or as Ohio State fans call it, why can't they score on every drive? What is this bullshit? It's like they want to make games close just to keep things interesting because Bill Gates Co. Yeah, and like nails it. It's this is a really good Penn State team that 
even despite losing to Indiana, was still ranked and was still ranked well. And we don't talk about rankings on this show because rankings are stupid. And by the way, this is pretty much in line with Kyle and I's final score prediction. Mm-hmm. What was it not? I think I had 42 to 17. No, I had 35 to 17. I think. But I, I don't remember what my yeah. prediction was. Uh, but it was something in that area. This is mm-hmm. very much in line with what Kyle and I predicted. And then, um, since we're reading tweets, Tom Moore, uh, obviously, over at the Buckeye Scoop, who we are very much affiliated with. Hello, Buckeye Scoop. Um, he tweets out. He says, I just looked. Ross Fulton, all these people are scoop people, by the way, had this game at 36 to 23. Tony Gerdeman had it at 35 to 20. Mark Givler had it at 34 to 21. Gleitman and Green both had uh, both had it at 34 to 24. Uh, Nevada had it at 35 to 21. Tom says he had it at 35 to 24. The point is, is that this was the expectation. Mm-hmm. And I think we just maybe got spoiled a little bit by the fact that Ohio State came out so hot. Yeah. This oh. game happened not exactly like we were expecting because Ohio State came out so hot. But if you look at the final score and the final stats, this is a game you would have and could have predicted. Mm-hmm. Some of oh. y'all are spoiled. By the way, I have my whatever stats I had before regarding to the Penn state, Indiana, that was totally wrong. It didn't, they didn't even have passing yards in there. So it was, they held Indiana 200 yards. Okay. It, either way. Sorry about that. No, it's all good. Um, yeah, no, it's in a way, this reminds me a lot like last year's uh, Penn state where I uh, state rolling along and all of a sudden had like turnovers, had that fumble right at the goal line. Um, and then like the immediately, I don't know if it's immediately, but pretty darn close. Like the next couple of drives, it was an interception and another fumble and Penn state was right back in it. It almost felt kind of like that this year, except Ohio State didn't turn the ball over though. Uh, it was just, it was just odd, odd. Um, I'm not going to say play calling, but odd plays that happened like at the end of the first half where for some odd reason they gave Penn State an extra second to be able to kick a field goal which cost me a sloop pick I I will say that that saved me a sloop pick <laughs> what you had Ohio State no I didn't I had Penn State here you, okay well you you, I, you had I thought you had Ohio State in the okay never yeah. mind Never mind. I'm not going to argue with you. We don't have time. The <laughs> you still beat me this week. <laughs> yeah, but Sean Brawley beat both of us, which means we're out t-shirt money. Yes. But yeah, uh, it's it's you look at you look at the numbers here, and like the difference between the first half and second half is just tells the tale of how of how well Penn state made halftime adjustments. So, I mean, hats off to yeah. them. You look at the first half stats, Ohio state, very balanced, hundred, almost 150 passing 130 on the ground, almost 300 yards for the first half and held Penn state to 75 yards Oh, for five and third downs. And just, they couldn't do anything at all. Move forward to the end of the game here. And Penn State has over 300 yards and Ohio State had over 500 yards. And Penn State tacked on, uh, what is that, 19 points for the game. Or for the half. Yeah. I don't know. It, oh, uh, as Kyle said, they made some really good halftime adjustments. Uh, they remembered that they had wide receivers. I think is a really important adjustment that Penn State had. Mm-hmm. I... I, I'm not going to say this with a certainty because I don't know that it's true. Did they have any receptions, the wide receivers as a whole, in the first half? Because I, I, we don't have player stats for the first half. We have larger stats for the first half. Um, but I don't think that they had... Because they, they basically, their entire first half offense was 
run the ball with Devin Ford and Sean Clifford, mostly Sean Clifford, and throw it to Firemuth. That was I it. Even know if, I don't even know if Firemuth had a reception the second half. I don't know. I don't know the answer but to that. They held, they held him to three receptions all yeah. game. Uh, excellent. Excellent work keeping Firemuth under control. Mm-hmm. Dotson had a really good game. Uh, Dotson, I mean, it just, he made some just great catches. You just have to just sit there and appreciate some of those catches that he, he had. Uh, yeah, there there was that drive that was basically just two long passes to Dotson, and people were ripping, absolutely ripping Wade over. Guys, watch those plays. Wade's in perfect position. Sometimes, and this goes back to you guys being really kind of spoiled, sometimes the other team is good. And sometimes... A guy like Dotson makes plays. Did you see those catches? The first one he catches with one hand, with his offed hand, left-handed. The second one, he climbs a ladder, and it, it looked like that one catch that uh, uh, that Hill had last was it last year, maybe two years ago, where he just sort of plucked it out of the ha- out of the air with one hand. Yeah. Sometimes the other guys make great plays. That drive was Dotson making great plays. Even NFL corners give up passes. Mm-hmm. And, and I know we, I know we've always said that defense wins championships, and I still believe that to be true. I don't. But I don't. Not not but, at the college level. But when you just have just there's just some plays that no matter how well you have coverage, how well you're defending the plays, the offensive players can just yeah. make those kind of plays though. I mean, look, look at Ohio state and Alabama game and how many great plays Ohio state had in that game. I mean, everybody will remember the, the pass to Michael Thomas and him making the great catch there. It, it, it just happens. And sometimes you just gotta, you'd be like, well, shit, that was just yeah. a great play. <laughs> look, look at every Olave touchdown. Like Penn State had good coverage on Olave on both of those touchdowns. Mm-hmm. Fields and Olave were just too good to stop on those plays. Yeah. And because it's Ohio State making that play, we just sort of stand up and go, yay, Fields and Olave are so great, which they are. Um, I, I guess, I don't know. I feel like we're just sort of complaining now. We're mm-hmm. reverse complaining. Uh, I, and, and I'd like to stop doing that now. All right. But all right. Let's, let's talk about the positives here. Justin Fields, insane. 28, 28 for 34, 82% completion for over 300 yards and four touchdowns for the game on the season. And this, uh, coming from Lori Schmidt, uh, 48 for 55. You want to do the math on that one real quick, Kyle? It's only seven in completions. Mm-hmm. For almost just shy of 600 yards, six touchdowns, and oh, by the way, no interceptions. He has one more incompletion than he has touchdowns. He's almost as likely to throw a touchdown as an incompletion. And what I think is really great, too, and... You can look at that last sack, though, as a really hard hit to Fields, though. Yeah. But only two sacks for the game. Only two sacks. And I don't know if there was a play where they had a design run One. for Fields. On the Just, on the goal line, was it the, maybe uh, the last yes. touchdown? It was, like, it was like the three, four-yard QB sneak. No, no, no. I'm not counting the sneak. Uh, okay. There was a designed... So, I... The the play that they ended up scoring on was sort of that Tebow esque fake, where he sort of faked like he was going to run, and then he tossed it over the top to, uh, that one was Ruckert, right? Ruckert with two touchdowns, by the way. Uh, but the play right before that was like a designed J T Barry esque running play. Other than those, but that was the only actual rush. Yeah, if you, by Justin if you take Fields. Out, if you take out the two sacks there, Fields did four carries yeah. for 12 yards. Well, was it the stat shows The stat shows here he has six for negative four. 
But okay. Yeah. yeah six, so there six, was I have, I was able to see here he had 16 yards loss for sacks. And and then so the four, kneel for four. And then the kneel down counts as a rush. Oh. Yeah. So there was the sneak play, the designed run at the goal line, two sacks which count as rushes, the kneel down and then we're missing a sixth one. Somewhere. Did he run out of bounds at some point? I, I don't he know. It's, it's it's fine. Either way. We're we're not we're not gonna we're not. Either way, they didn't over. really rely on Justin Fields in this game to run the ball, and it was a heavy dose of Master Teague and Trey Sermon, where they combined for thirty six carries for a buck sixty six, which yeah. averaged to about four and a half per yard or four and a half yards per carry. Yeah, yeah. And yet people were still. Uh, I don't know if I want to keep complaining about people complaining, but even then people are like, well, I guess the running backs were all right. 36 carries over four and a half per carry, 166, well, about four and a half per carry, 166 yards. Teague alone, 23 carries, 110 yards, four and a half per carry. That's Teague alone. Teague looked great, by the way. Mm-hmm. Uh, the all, the offensive line. Holy crap. Much better than much better than against Nebraska. Much and better. against better talent, by the way. Owe and Tony are incredible players. Where were they all night? Hats off to Petit Faree and Thayer Munford. Hats off. Amazing. And then on in the running game, push all night, got holes all night. As Kyle alluded to earlier, Ohio State, how good was Ohio State feeling about their offensive line? They ran a sneak when they needed three yards to get a first down. <laughs> this yeah. is how good Ohio State felt about their offensive line. Yeah, and we didn't really talk about him, though, but one player on that Penn State defensive line who really made his presence known was Antonio Shelton, the the big old um I think he's nose tackle, but the big old He's a defensive uh, tackle. I'm not sure if he's a I'm not sure if he's the one or the two tech or yeah, the one but or the three He he tech. made his presence known and gave White Davis uh some Yeah some, some plays to work on some plays <laughs> that he, he needs to work on. Like but again, kind of like with with uh Wade, uh we have such high expectations for Davis yeah. and Wade that anytime we see them mess up, it's like, Oh my God. Um, and then that's fine. They deserve those high expectations and we should hold them to it. That's I'm not, that, that's fine. I don't know. I'm just, but it's, it's I was again, really, it's a, I was really it's happy. What It's against what you said before against much better talent in yeah. a about said hostile environment, but <laughs> on the road, in, yeah. in the Happy Valley. Yeah. I mean, you don't have the crowd really the... Can we talk about crowd the noise? Live, the live crowd Can noise Can we talk there? about crowd noise? Whoever was but, running the crowd noise in Happy Valley go to hell. I don't know how many times a play would end. And then yeah. I'd go to like check our Discord. Because Twitter was toxic and I was living in the Discord most of the night. Because whatever. Twitter's Twitter. I'm getting sick of it. I'm really happy that our Discord is coming alive. Because I can just hang out in there instead. Uh, but like, I'd, I'd like play would happen. I'd go to see what people were saying in the discord. I'd go to say something in our discord and <laughs> then the crowd noise would amp up and my eyes would, t- would go back to the television. And cause I would instinctively think that maybe there was a flag or maybe there was some extracurricular activity, a fight or something. But no, it's just because the the dude on the on the crowd noise was late. Stop it with the with the crowd noise going up and down. Let's just get a single hum of crowd noise. It, it was just it was just a delay. It was just like planned. Ah, oh. <laughs> <laughs> it was yeah. terrible. Can we just get like one consistent crowd and, noise, and what, please? And what, Whatever came to Big Ten agreement of hey, here is a list of of songs or things that you can play on the PA as a group for the big 10. I think the crowd noise was approved crowd noise. Okay. I think is all that because the annoying 
lion cat growling was still annoying as hell. I, that that doesn't fall under new rules. That falls under old rules. And I assume as long as they stick to the decibel limit, then it's fine. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Either way, Kyle, um, Garrett Wilson, Chris Olave, back to back hundred the... yard, back to back a hundred yard games for both of them. Yeah, it seems like Garrett Wilson is our possession guy, and Chris Olave is our big play guy. That would that yes. would seem to be the way that, this is playing out. Definitely. Olave here. with two touchdowns again. That's two straight games with two touchdowns for Chris Olave, who we had high expectations for coming into the season, and he's smashing them. Same for Garrett Wilson. I would say that, again, high expectations, smashing them. 11 receptions for Garrett Wilson this game. When was the last time that Ohio State had a true, because ever since the Urban Meyer era, we got used to having like this really deep wide receiver rotation. Mm -hmm. But Ohio state definitely has a one, two at wide receiver right now. Yes, absolutely. When was the last time Ohio state had like, well, these are our two wide receivers. It's you'd have to, you'd have to go back. Um, I'm not going to try to do that right now. Uh, Comment section wherever your comment section might be, or maybe just reach out to us on Twitter. When was the last time Ohio state had a true one, two at wide receiver? I'm going to think, does it have to go back to Michael Jenkins? Mm, No, no, it would have been, would have been earlier than that. I mean, you can think of seven 11. Maybe as well. Okay. We're, I'm not, I don't want to waste a bunch of time. Either seven 11 or uh, seven and 10. (laughs) <laughs> I feel like they were running kind of three deep at that time. Ohio state has a true one, two at wide receiver right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that that's really weird. The, these two but I love right it. here, these two right here remind me a lot of getting either getting Holmes or getting. Um, wow. I am drawing a blank. Not, not sure where you're going with that. We're, um, we're moving forward. Kyle, year right. of the tight end. Is it the year of the tight end? Two, two reception touchdowns for Ruckert here. There was a total of six receptions for the tight ends in this game. Yeah. Six receptions. Uh, do we, do we know what happened to Luke Farrell? Do we have injury updates on him yet? I, I don't, we, I, I'll tell you right now. We don't Ryan day, very secretive when it comes to injuries, uh, Luke Farrell was hurt last night, Saturday night. Uh, we'll, we'll see how that plays out. Uh, but it did allow Jake Hausman to get into the game and get a reception. Uh, Jameson Williams still sort of waiting for Jameson Williams to pop off. Um, I, and I think that's still coming as teams start to think, man, we're going to have to double Chris Olave. That's going to start open, opening things up for Jamison Williams to start making some deep plays. Um, the freshman wide receivers didn't make much of an impact last night. Uh, Jackson Smith and Jimba had a had a uh, single reception. Kyle, can we talk about the defense now? Yes, defense. The defensive line is really showing up right now. They, they're really making their presence known with Haskell and and company just really making their presence known. And this was, this was one area that we weren't too sure of. Like, all right, uh, we lost a lot of great players on the defensive end. Who's really going to be stepping up here? And they're probably the, the heart and soul of this defense right now through two games. No offense, Kyle. And I, I know that... Uh... Haskell Garrett is definitely our feel good story for the year so far and had a great game last week, but Tommy Toji. Yes. Tommy Togi. I don't know why I always want to throw a Z in there. Tommy Togi. Yo, was that three sacks last night? Seven tackles, three sacks from the nose tackle position. We've seen, we've seen, uh, Guy Draymond Jones, for example, from the three tech become great pass rushers at Ohio State. 
From the nose tackle position, you're getting three sacks? Tommy Togiai. What's up, big man? That's a coming out party for Tommy Togiai. I'm just showing off that I know how to say his name now. <laughs> so the defensive line last night, like the offensive line last night, we challenged both of them. They both had subpar performances against Nebraska. We already talked about how the offensive line had a great game with the quarterback sneak and all of that. The defensive line, who we called out on this show last Monday. we I, I straight up looked right into the camera and said, Jonathan Cooper, you got that block O, earn it on the field now. Because he did not have any sort of spectacular game against Nebraska. Uh, he came back. He looked dominant. Mm-hmm. He looked disruptive. The stats, stats probably don't show it. No. He had three tackles, half a sack, but but he, you're, you're right. Like Togi, I definitely... One, the stat machine there, six tackles and three sacks, six tackles, three sacks. But here's the thing. I know at least one, at least one of Togi eyes sacks was as a result of, of Jonathan Cooper yes. crashing the pocket, forcing Clifford to step up and into those defensive yeah. tackles. It was, it was almost a Bosa type of sack where he pushed the lineman right into him and, and the quarterback ended up escaping and there was Togi eye to clean it up. Yes. Uh, so a lot, so not to take anything away from Togi. He had an amazing game, mm-hmm. but a lot of his production was a result of the defensive ends. Zach Harrison had a great game as did Tyler Friday, um, crashing the pocket and forcing Clifford to step up into those defensive tackles. You, you Zach Harrison, most- Zach Harrison, by the way, ha- you want to talk about, pushing running backs around. Why is it always Penn state? You had, you had Bosa with the walk off sack where he just pushed Mm -hmm. the running back into the quarterback. You had, why do I always forget his name? Kyle Hubbard, Hubbard, Aaron Hubbard. I don't know why I always forget Aaron Hubbard. Sean, Sam, 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 not Aaron. Oh my God. (laughs) You might want to drink some more of your coffee there. Drink some more of your coffee. I'll, I'll, I'll finish it up here. <laughs> Hubbard, Hubbard, just a couple years ago, too, against tackling Penn State. both the running back and the quarterback. Against Penn State. Against Penn State. And here we are, 2020. Zach Harrison, again, on the read option, tackles both of them. And Cooper had a uh, almost a post sack where he pushed the blocker mm-hmm. back almost. into. Almost. Yeah. You want to guess who had the most tackles for the game? Um, I'm going to guess it's a linebacker and I'm going to guess it's, it's either going to be Pete Warner or it's going to be Borland. Borland had four tackles. This player here had seven tackles for the game and he, and this will give it away, but he's oh, the one, on. he's the one hooker. He's the one who had the only turnover. Nope. Yeah, he's the only one they had the only turnover for the for the game. Yeah. Uh Hooker looked a little bit like his brother last night. Uh mm-hmm. struggled early against Nebraska. Fig- started to figure it out. First game starting against Nebraska. Again, we didn't get some cupcake warm-ups this year, COVID blah blah blah. Didn't get cupcakes this year to warm up. His first game out is against Nebraska. He didn't have a good start to that game comes back, has a great finish to the Nebraska game. This game, he's comfortable. He's looking good. Yes. Uh, Proctor it's improving. as well. It's improving. It's, it's a work in progress, but it's improving. Proctor as well. Didn't have a great start mm-hmm. against Nebraska. Ended up looking really good this game. Mm-hmm. Seven banks though. That one drive, they just picked on him. That first drive of the second half. Uh, I am not, I don't want to, I don't want to rip on banks. I I don't either because they just, that second half, they just found that connection with Dotson that entire second half. I'd love, I'm going to rewatch the game and I'm going to confirm if what I'm about to say is true or not. We're recording this kind of earlier than normal. I haven't had a chance to really sort of pick over the game. What I suspect happened was Penn state does a lot of the wide receivers go deep and the, the tight ends work underneath. That's a lot of what they do. They came out into the second half and the wide receivers were running stuff underneath. So you saw seven banks 
and all the corners playing way off. And then they came out with a halftime adjustment where the wide receivers started running short routes. Ohio State wasn't ready for it on that drive. Penn State goes down, gets a touchdown. Then the second drive, Ohio State adjusted and they weren't picking on Banks or Brown anymore. Um, Dotson, again, had a really good game against against Sean Wade. And not, not all of those catches, by the way, were against Sean Wade. And again, those those two, I'm not putting that on Sean Wade. That's just Dotson making some amazing plays. Uh, Dotson's third touchdown, Wade did not look great. And I'd really like to look over that game or that play and figure out why. Uh, Wade looked very content to allow Dotson to run inside. Like it just, it, uh, one, one thing we got in the discord, someone said that it looked like he was just going through the motions on that play that he just sort of was there. Mm Mm-hmm. And it looks bad. If you watch the replay through the TV, it looks bad. The thing, and by the way, it may, it might just be bad. I'm, I'm not, I'm not completely defending him. I'd love to see an all 22 on it. I, I'd love to see exactly what happened. It looked like he just let him run inside, which maybe he was, was, was Wade potentially in a deep quarter was Wade potentially in a deep third. Was he expecting help on the inside and therefore was staying outside without knowing the defensive play call, without being able to see it from like an all 22 angle. Um, I understand that it looks bad. And by the way, it's still, if it was man to man, if that was a man to man play, that's a terrible play by Sean Wade, but I don't know that it was a man to man play. So I'm, I'm simply reserving judgment on that play right now Mm -hmm. because I don't know. It's, it's easy to maybe rush to judgment on it, but right now I just don't know. And I, and I'd love an opportunity to look at that play, uh, with a, with a bit more of a film study perspective than, than I just don't want to, I don't want to rip Sean Wade for that at this point. Now, like I said, if that was a man to man call and if that was his guy and they weren't in a zone, that's a terrible play. That's an absolute yes. terrible play. Absolutely. But I don't know that that was the call. So I'm not, I'm just going to cover it slowly. Mm-hmm. That's all. We don't need to rush to judgment. Yep. All right. Um, I think, I think that's about it for this game here. I mean, and, and j- to kind of wrap it up, Ohio state took care of business. Obviously there's things to work on, but as we mentioned already, it's only the second game of the season here uh, against a really talented team here. Ha State has some very wonderful games upcoming here. Yeah. Lots of time Rutgers, to Maryland, work on the Indiana, little things. Illinois, then Michigan State. Yeah, it's. I, I think the biggest problem from here on out is staying motivated, staying focused. Uh, it's a pretty easy and, slate coming probably, up. Probably, probably probably even a more thing, something to even um, be more cautious about staying healthy. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, that's, that's probably the biggest thing. Uh, yeah. Abs- I mean, look at Clemson, look at Wisconsin. Absolutely. And by the way, one of those games, Ohio state's not going to play. I'm just throwing that out there right now. One of those games will get, can- I don't know which one. Uh, it's just, that's the way things are going right now. Mm-hmm. Ohio State won't play all those games. Ohio State has a bye week coming at some point this during this slate. We just don't know where. Yeah, that's a thing that's going to happen. By the way, uh, Justin Hilliard didn't get to play in this game. Tested positive for COVID on a rapid test. Tested again. Tested negative. So we should have news this week once he takes the legitimate test. The rapid. You, you, you give up accuracy for speed. That's what happens when you take the rapid test. You give up accuracy for speed. I don't know why you don't just do a third rapid test and then just go with the majority. That, But the Big Ten is mishandling a lot of things this year. I don't know. It's weird that he can't play, but yet he's there with the players on the sideline. Doesn't make sense. But Well, because you can wear a mask on the sideline, which I okay. presume he... I don't know. Um, Either way. All right, Either let's... 
Let's hear from our sponsors, Jared. Oh boy, we're way over on a sponsor. Yeah, the Mad, Mad Canadian here, um, proud sponsor of the Slewcast for the past year. And I'm just really happy to still partner with uh, the Mad Canadian. And let's talk about a few spices that he has to offer here. Uh, we have the Discord. Discord is used in a, in a few different ways here. Uh, but he says here it's similar to the Four Horsemen, which I'll mention here in a moment, but it has a sweeter base. It's a great topping for chicken and ribs. Um, it's a great, it's a great blend that's um, fantastic and uh, spicy. Spicy, yes. As well as the Four Horsemen. The Four Horsemen, very spicy. Um, he says it's it's a uh, barbecue seasoning with four different types of hot peppers blended into it. Um, it's not the world's hottest, but it definitely gets your um, taste buds going, though. Uh, and the third one here, the savory. Savory is a, uh, he says, this is an exact seasoning we put on our pulled pork here at the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company. Um, but it's a salty, savory mix that is sure to be a favorite during your next barbecue. Be sure to check out all the other great seasonings at the Mad Canadian BBQ.com. That is the Mad Canadian BBQ.com. Promo code Sloopcast10. Check out for 10% off. Mad Canadian Barbecue Company, where they have your butt covered. This episode of the Sloopcast also brought to you by the Iron Bean Coffee Company. Kyle, the Iron Bean Coffee Company, again, you're going to jump on that website and you're going to be like, oh, those prices. Worth it. It's like $17 a bag. You can get that down to like $15 a bag on a subscription service. Boom, you're saving money. You get free shipping over $50. Boom, you're saving money. But, and look at the size of these bags. I know our YouTube, I can't cover this entire bag with my hand. I don't have the biggest hands in the world, but I can't cover that entire bag with my hand. That's a big bag of coffee. That's legitimately a pound of coffee. A lot of places like, eh, forget it. You're supporting an Ohio company. You're supporting a veteran owned company. These beans are roasted after, not before, not way before, after you order it. You can get it whole bean. You can get it in a uh, freshly ground. Again, it's freshly ground because it hasn't even been roasted yet by the time you order it. It's made in small batches, roast to order, fair trade, organic uh, guys a lot of coffee beans come from some bad situations i'm not going to get totally into the morality of coffee and how that is sometimes bad i'm not going to get all the way in it but these this isn't that this is fair trade like i said it's organic uh some of the some of the flavors are available in k-cups uh gift cards are available we're coming up on christmas season you have iron bean gift cards available and uh, a huge selection, absolute enormous selection of coffees to choose from medium roast, light roast, dark roast, black roast. There are flavored coffees, huge selection over at Iron Bean Coffee Company. The Iron Bean Coffee Company is America. Iron, oh, I'm going to try that one again. The Iron Bean Coffee Company, America's local coffee roaster, ironbeancoffee.com. All right, Kyle. Um, Let's let's do Ask Sloopcast before we get too far away from the Ohio State game. Then we'll buzz through some national perspective stuff. All right. All right. Duncan from the Discord asks us, Buckeyes, by the way, these are 100% from our Discord server, discord.thesloopcast.com. If you want to join, there are both premium channels which are available to our patrons at the three dollars starting at the three dollar tier and there are uh also free channels available in the discord server so we have uh made the discord server public but the premium channels are still just for our our patron subscribers so that's how that's working duncan from the discord uh buckeyes tied the consecutive wins yeah, uh, against ranked teams on the road record. How does that stat? How does that stat handle home team 
at a neutral site. It doesn't. Neutral site is a separate stat. Yep. There are home stats, away stats, neutral site stats. Uh, technically speaking, Ryan Day is undefeated both home and away as the bowl game is a neutral site game. Yes. Uh, from Suncard 19, what play showed the most about who this team is? I think a lot of a lot of them is probably the fourth down plays. Yeah. It just showed a lot of poise, just a lot of just execution on them. And what were they? Were they perfect on fourth downs here? Let me look here. That should be in our stats. It should be. Um, nope, they were two for three. Uh, well, that's, that's perfect because of the kneel down. Yes. The kneel down technically counts. So in legitimate two attempts, two. two for two. Yeah. By the way, bombed it on that one on that fourth and short. You expecting a run play? This isn't Urban Meyer's. <laughs> you expected a quarterback draw on that fourth and short? This isn't Urban Meyer's Ohio State anymore. Now, we, we bomb it on fourth and short, y'all. That's how we roll now. God, I love Ryan Day's play calling. Yes. I'm not trashing Urban Meyer. Love what Urban Meyer did for this program. Love that Urban Meyer brought in Ryan Day. Love how he transformed the recruiting at Ohio State. Love that he brought in Mickey and Pantone. I'm not trashing Urban Meyer. Urban Meyer is one of the best program builders ever. I don't think he was a great in-game coach. Ryan Day is a great in-game coach. Yes. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, I think that fourth and short shows you a lot about who this team is, especially in comparison to Ryan, or excuse me, to Urban Meyer's Ohio State team. And by yes. the way, the fourth, was it? No, that wasn't a fourth down. I think that one was a third down. But the three-yard sneak play. It was like, you only needed one yard and he got like three and a half yards. No, they that. needed three yards. <laughs> oh. They needed three yards to get the first down and they ran a sneak play. That says to mm -hmm. me, this team will be run behind this amazing offensive line. That yes. is a statement play. Yeah. All right. Let's answer some of these. Just some more here. We got to move on a little bit here. Uh, Speed round. Let's go. Yep. Stewart says Wade slot or boundary boundary. He is an yes. NFL cornerback. I, we, we talked, I already talked about why we're yeah. being a little too hard on Sean Wade. Mm -hmm. I already talked about it. All right. Uh, Duncan says, can Minnesota have a disappointing enough year for PJ Fleck to lose his job? No, I know. we No, no. I'll just, I'll just stop right there. No, Minnesota's incredibly disappointing this year. They're bad this year. They have, they're down a lot of players because of COVID, including special teams. Mm -hmm. That's tough to get over people. We, we might find out real quick what it's like not to have a scholarship kicker. Uh, okay. And they're also down their punter. Minnesota's having issues this year. 2020 is going to be a pass for a lot of teams. Yes. PJ Fleck among them. He's doing right. great things in Minnesota. Duncan also says, if the full wideout is in effect, what's the score at halftime? I'd say I'd say you give seven points. I'd say you give seven points for home field for that. Uh, I saw Kirk Barton, who uh, owner, founder, runner of the Buckeye Scoop. Uh, I saw... I saw him once say that the whiteout in full effect is worth seven or 10 points. That is per Kirk Barton, a man who played in the whiteout urban Meyer, who has played in all corners of this country said that the whiteout is the worst environment to play in period. I, and a lot of people are like, and I, I see this all the time that they're like 500. They're like eight and eight or something like that in whiteout games they don't use the whiteout when Rutgers comes to town. No, they only use the whiteout against the best opponents. The absolute well, in the past, in the past couple of years, it's only been two teams. It's, it's essentially just Ohio state. And I would say most of the time, Michigan, but if Ohio state's on the schedule, yep. you want to talk about, well, why are they 50%? It's Ohio state's fault. <laughs> <laughs> this yes. this goes back to the thing of Ohio State will never have the toughest schedule in the Big Ten because they don't have to play Ohio State. Yep. All right. Randy 
asks us, most encouraging thing you saw from the Buckeyes versus Penn State? Most concerning also. Encouraging thing, the running game. I think the uh, offensive the running line games, as a whole. Yeah. The running game and offensive line have really improved uh, since the Nebraska game. And we mentioned it already a number of times. It's only the second game. They're only going to get better here. Uh, it's concerning probably the defensive backs right now. I would say the defensive backs is a little concerning right now. Yeah, they, they had complete success in the first half and then not so much in the second half. Uh, yeah. There's a lot of talent back there. They'll figure it out. I'm not I'm not actually all that concerned mm-hmm. about it. Maybe the most concerning thing right now, Hobble. Hobbill? I'm always pronouncing his name wrong. Blake Hobbill. Special teams. Just special teams. Yeah, special teams. All right. Duncan asks us another question here. Who's, who's in bigger trouble, Fleck or Harbaugh? Harbaugh. Harbaugh. It's got to be Harbaugh right now. Harbaugh has been on that hot seat for a number of years right now. Well, and he's also literally like, he doesn't have to be fired. His contract's up at the end of the year. Yes, that too. Yep. Harbaugh doesn't have to be fired. They could simply just not re-sign him. Yeah. All right. Uh, Stuart asks us. By the way, also lost to another rival. I, I saw. One in six. Yeah. At one, home. One in six at home against their their rivals, which I believe just is Ohio State and Michigan State is, yes. is how they quantify that. Yes. Stewart asks us, at is home. our D at home, yeah. Is our D line going to be dominant like this from here on? Based on the schedule that House State has, <laughs> I'm gonna say yes. Yeah, uh, the question why? is will will it continue into the playoffs? And yes. I, I like I like the chances. I, I think mm-hmm. this we, we started this season concerned about the defensive tackles and there still might be depth issues along the defensive tackles, but, but Garrett and Togiai are ready to roll. Yeah. Why did it seem as though our secondary struggled? I just, we already kind of covered that. I think the Penn, Penn state just had a, they really made some really good second half adjustments and really pinned their ears back and made some great, great plays. Also general. just give credit to Dotson. He's a very yes. good player. Yep. Uh, why did it seem like we haven't given enough sacks? We weren't given enough sacks. Uh, yeah. What was it? Four sacks? It felt like a lot more. Uh, uh-huh. I, that's a great question. It felt like Ohio State was up Clifford's butt the entire game, but ultimately... Five sacks. Ohio State had five, five sacks. Five sacks. It felt like a lot more. I'm, yeah. I, I'd, I'd have to figure that out during a rewatch. I'm not 100% sure. Um, yeah. yeah, I'm not 100% sure. What type of offense should we be on more high alert for? Mobile quarterbacks, I think Absolutely. is. Mobile and quarterbacks and uh, court, either A, a mobile quarterback, or B, a quarterback who is rhythmically based and can get rid of the ball in under two seconds. Mm-hmm. Yep. All right. Um, is Rutgers for real? I th- think they're, they're good. They're fine. They're better than they were how many for by, how many years? By Rutgers standards, they're very good. Yes. By Big Ten East standards, they're fine. They're good. They're fine. They're fine. Uh did Michigan State prove that Joe Mel- Joe Milton isn't the second coming of Cam Newton? Did that need to be proved? That's, isn't that kind of like proving that the earth is round? Yes. Oh, wait a minute. I think that's actually <laughs> an issue right now. Uh I, I yeah, sure. I, I never, I don't, I don't know who actually believed that to begin I with, don't but either. sure. Well, the coaching staff did, but either way, will we face another ranked team before game nine? No. Uh, uh Indiana's he, ranked. Indiana is currently will they ranked. Still be, I don't like talking about ranks. Uh, yeah. maybe, maybe, maybe 2020 is weird. Uh, after tonight, who is your 70% carry guy? Teague. Yeah, Teague, Teague looked Teague. much better. Uh, that's, and I'm not I'm not giving up on Sermon. We saw this a lot with um, when it was Weber and J.K. Dobbins. One one day, one of them would have a great game. The next game, the other one would have a great game. We might yep. see that this time around. Which player needs to play better for us to be elite? Wade. Uh, I, I'd, I'd say Wade. Which I yeah I think well I think he's really the only guy who we expect a ton from who maybe yeah I I would say I want to see more from Zach Harrison and he had a good game but we really really need that 
sort of Chase Young-esque guy, and Cooper's very good, but if we're talking about someone being like the next Bosa, the next Chase Young, it's got to be Zach Harrison. Okay. How did Clifford make it through that game? I don't know, man. Hats off to Clifford for just still standing. Yeah, I mean, the there, there, was a, there was a thing going around Twitter. He says, I don't want to just hang around, how to say, I want to beat them. Well, he hung around. I, was was <laughs> that completely overblown? It was. Come on. What would you expect him to say? Yeah. Oh, well, we suck. Yeah. And we don't have high expectations for this game. Hmm. What do you want it's him Penn to say? State, yeah. Is Penn State just a mediocre team or are or are they or are we that great? It's it's somewhere in between that. This is a the offense is very, 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 very good. Ohio State's very. offense is very, 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 very good. Penn State's defense is very, very, very good. So if you want to talk about it from Ohio State's offense versus Penn State's defense, Ohio State is that good. Yes. Um, defense, I'm not completely sold yet. And it's not to be surprised with other teams. too. We've seen other top program teams struggling defense, too. So, yeah. I am, we're I'm going to have to really keep it. We're going to have to really keep a close eye in the coming weeks here. And by the way, Ohio I'm State not does. willing to say that Ohio State's defense is struggling. They're maybe not performing to the standard that we want them to perform at, but I, I'm not going to put yep. struggle on them. All right. Did you see Pete Warner bullying that offensive lineman? Y'all, y'all, all of y'all owe a lot of apologies to Tough Borland and Pete Warner. Yeah, they they uh, played you know what? their butts off. Austin. Austin. <laughs> you know what? I love you, Austin. Uh here here's the thing. Here's the thing. Uh a lot of you are still like real salty towards Pete Warner. And you guys are wrong. Tough Borland, we can have a conversation. He's a, maybe he's a situational player. Maybe he's not to the speed that we okay. We can have a conversation about Tough Borland. I'm a Tough Borland mm -hmm. fan. A lot of you aren't. We can have a conversation. If you're still hating on Pete Warner, you're wrong. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. Yeah. Um, is it truly the year of the tight end? I sure. Yes. Sure. Year of the tight end. Officially which, now. All right. And which position group took the biggest jump from week one? I pick offensive line or defensive line. Yes. Um, I'll say I, offensive line. Yeah, I'm going to say offensive line too. Yeah. All right, but um, Ohio State right. controlled the trenches last night. Right, Beautiful. Quickly here, Stewart. Will this guy make an appearance after last night? And, and it's a it's... picture of Roman McCullough, uh, brother of Sean McCullough. Uh, mm -hmm. And I believe that is a shot at Ohio State's current long snapper who completely botched only one of two punts. One of two punts that our boy Drew Chrisman had an opportunity to punt last night. He only had one opportunity to pin Penn State deep. And it bounced off his knee. And the long snapper, whose name I forget, who isn't the McCullough, uh, completely yeah. botched it. Yeah, don't, don't, don't rag on him. It was one play. It was one it play. Was I'm not saying, I'm not, I'm not ragging on him. The, no. the fact of the well, matter is people, is that, people are. Okay. So, and Stewart, Stewart is say, here. Say folks. Stewart's name. Say, say Stewart's name. Stewart. <laughs> We, right. love, uh, we last, love you too, Stuart. Last question from Chad. Uh, are we seeing whoa, Teague? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Cooper. I don't know why I said Chad. Sorry. Cooper, 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 Cooper. Are we seeing Teague start to break away as the main back? Yes. I think that this game is an indicator of that, but I also uh, see what I just said about Weber and Dobbins mm -hmm. and how it might be a completely different next game. So we don't yep. have a large enough sample size to say for sure yet, mm -hmm. but this one game is an indicator of that. Yep. I All think right. Sermon, Kyle, yes or no, does it look like Sermon's trying to go house every every game or every run, like maybe just get the yards? It, that's, that's, I've... I, I'm not going to say that for sure yet. I want to figure that out mm -hmm. during the rewatch. But the impression I got last night was that it looks like he's trying to take every carry to the house. It's hard. It's really hard to tell. Yeah. Really hard to tell. Which is a thing that JK Dobbins admitted that he did his sophomore year that hurt him. So I don't know. I, I'm not willing to say that he's absolutely doing that yet, but just, yeah. a, just a thought I had. All right. Uh, quickly here going through the national games here, just quick one or two sentences. Yep. 
Maryland uh, upsetting Minnesota 45 to 44 in overtime. Uh, you know, I think we kind of talked about PJ Fleck already. Maryland better than we expected. Minnesota worse than we expected. Um, we'll, we'll keep an eye on to things. His, to his brother. To his brother there. Looking good. Yeah. Ha- had a bad week one. We'll find out here in two weeks. Again, how- college football is about having an efficient um, playmaking quarterback, period. Mm-hmm. defenses yeah. don't win championships not mm-hmm. in college football quarterbacks do yeah clemson coming from behind i think it was like 17 points i think it was 20 beat maybe beat boston college 34 to 28 yeah boston college had a chance right at the end there to win it too lessons learned here boston college program on the rise keep an eye on boston college mm-hmm. jeff halfley's the man yeah. uh and you talk about and you talk about um elite teams struggling defensively yeah. Clemson did the first half. They made adjustments in the second half and really pinned down Boston College. Yeah. Well, here's here's the question. And, and again, big storyline here. Lawrence does not play. Trevor Lawrence mm-hmm. doesn't play. So on one hand, is Clemson just Trevor Lawrence? That's We saw Clemson sort of take that next step and no longer be a team that is Clemsoning. Not just under Trevor Lawrence. Uh, that that's That's not fair to say. Um, mm-hmm. but is, is, it's an interesting thing to keep an eye on. We also won't have, uh, Trevor Lawrence against Notre Dame. Also, Trevor Lawrence doesn't play defense. So you don't get that full excuse Clemson because yep. your defense looks shoddy against Boston college. Yes. All right. Um, West Virginia upsetting Kansas state. If you want to call that an upset, but 37 to 10. Technically, Kansas State, I think, mm-hmm. I think was undefeated in conference play, I be- yeah. believe. So, yeah, ab- absolutely an upset. Uh, the Big 12 sucks. What do you want me to say? Yes. Speaking of Big 12, Iowa State, still my contender to win the Big 12. 52 to 22 over Kansas. Uh, I, that, I, I still like that, even though they lost to Oklahoma mm-hmm. State. I think yep. you're on to something there. Uh, Boilermakers um, beating Illinois 31 to 24. I didn't watch this game, so. Not at all. Not at all. I don't even know why I included it. Maybe just because it's a big 10 Sparty game. beats little brother Michigan 27 to 24. It's always a good day. It's always a good day when Michigan loses. Remember, when you ride alone, you ride with Harbaugh. <laughs> Probably the, one of the big stories here, Georgia, only 14 points. Yeah. To Kentucky. They th- win 14 to three. I believe that was the halftime score. And I didn't uh, think, I, I didn't think uh, much of it because this is what Georgia does. They kind of just let a team hang around for a while and then blow them out in the fourth quarter. That's, that's just what Georgia has been doing all year to everyone except Alabama. That is just crazy. So I didn't think much of it. And then I went back and I saw the final score, which still was 14 to three. I, I don't know. What what do you what you do in Georgia? It was seven three at halftime. Seven three at halftime. Okay. Fourteen to three. But they didn't score like they scored like on the first drive there. But the then first, that was it. The first drive of the third quarter? Of the second half there. Yeah. Yeah. Cincinnati blows out Memphis forty nine to ten. Is Cincinnati for real? Yes. Uh, we're, we're going to be watching Cincinnati more closely. We're going to be watching BYU more closely, uh, what about, because what about coastal Carolina here? That's a little bit of a tougher play. It's one thing for an ACC team or an independent team like BYU to be getting in. It's another thing for a, I, their coastal Carolina, their Sun Belt. Yes. I'm almost certain that's the case. I think Kyle, we're going to get a look it up. Kyle, look it up situation. <laughs> they are Sunbelt. Yeah. It's, it's a different thing for a Sunbelt team to get involved in a playoff conversation. That's not to say that coastal mm-hmm. Carolina isn't good. I would love to see, I, I'd love to see a group of five team get into the playoff just cause. And it, it could with how the big 12 is looking. Uh, yeah. Uh, Maybe Oklahoma state loses to Texas. We'll talk about that a little bit later. Uh, it, the big 12, we'll see what happens. The, the, the pack 12 is mm-hmm. starting up this next weekend. 
I think this is a perfect year for Cincinnati or BYU to get in. We'll see. Yeah, I, I, I'm not high on it yet. I'm still keeping their percentage fairly low, but their percentage exists. And that's, that's saying something. Mm -hmm. uh, Notre Dame beats Georgia Tech 31 to 13. It sets up sets up a big matchup with Notre Dame versus Clemson next weekend. Again, no Trevor Lawrence. I mm -hmm. was giving Notre and Dame. And I think it's in Notre Dame too. I don't know. Uh, the Yeah, this is interesting. This is very interesting because I had just sort of been laughing off. And I still don't think Notre Dame's all that great. They're definitely not a top 10. Uh, they're not, not a top five team. They're not a top four team. Yep, yep. in Notre Dame. Yep. But with no Trevor Lawrence... That makes yeah. this game interesting. Very. Yes. Because I don't think it was interesting before. I think Clemson was going to destroy mm -hmm. Notre Dame before. No Trevor yeah. Lawrence? We'll see. Yeah. Indiana uh, pulls away late to beat Rutgers 37 to 21. Yeah, this game was more competitive than that final score indicates. Yes. Northwestern beats Iowa 21 to 20. Kyle, yeah, real, real quick. I know we're going to try to. Indiana? Second place in the Big Ten East? They are right now. I But they might finish there. They could. Okay. They just, could. Just had to point that out. Mm -hmm. Got to gotta, gotta show some love for our Hoosiers. Yes. Uh, DBU <laughs> proposed... Good, good, good <laughs> call skipping DBU. Iowa. Supposedly DBU oh, man. loses to Auburn 48 to 11. And just so we're clear, Auburn also sucks. I just, <laughs> just Auburn has a good brand name. I get it. But just so we're very clear, Auburn also sucks. LSU just bleh, this year. Ugh. Has, a, has a coach ever won a national title one year and then been fired the next? Gene Chizik. Oh. Was it Gene Chizik at Auburn who got real close to that? Because this is, this is what it's... I think that's who it was. Because it's starting to look a lot like... A lot... Notre, or, uh, Auburn wins a title with Cam Newton. It becomes obvious two years later that it was all Cam Newton. And then... Now, was it Gene... Kyle, are you looking that up for me? Gene Chizik... Was that the Auburn coach that won the national title just because of Cam Newton? Well, we're now looking at that with Coach O. Yeah. He yeah. Was, it was all Joe Burrow Alex, and, Alex and, and their passing game coordinator, yeah. uh, Brady. And yep. they're both gone and LSU sucks again. Yep. LSU rushed the ball 27 times for 32 yards. Whew. That has to just be straight up offense. Now, I will say this. Auburn, despite sucking... Cause they do, they suck. I'm not, I'm not suggesting otherwise. They do have a good front four at least. Um, so, but still, but still. And LSU can't figure out what quarterback they're going to use. Cause they use two quarterbacks and they both looked bad. And well, it's LSU. Yes. All right. Uh, the upset of the weekend, Texas beat Oklahoma state in overtime 41 to 34. Is Texas back? But I would say Michigan State defeating Michigan was the upset of the weekend. Just as a point, we don't have to we don't have to fight about it. I just want to okay. point that out. All right. All right. Uh, no, Texas is not back. Tex well, Texas is back because this is just who they are. They play well when they're not supposed to. They play poorly when <laughs> they are supposed to play well. Mm -hmm. This is Texas back, yeah, because that's who Texas is. Yeah, they're a. Top 25 team, but not a top 15 team that plays well every once in a while. Mm -hmm. They're Virginia Tech. Congratulations, Texas. You're Virginia Tech. Let's see here. Alabama shuts out Miss Mississippi State 41 to nothing. Real, real quick, Big 12, eliminated from the playoff question mark? Yeah, as of right now, yes. Because you got, as of right now, you got... If right, now, I would, right, now, right now, I would have Alabama... I'd have Ohio State, I'd have Clemson, Clemson and Notre Dame currently, right now. Oh man, I really want to say Cincinnati. Currently. I really want to say Cincinnati. After, after, after next weekend, you could put in Cincinnati. Because really one want... of those two teams are going to lose. Maybe BYU. I really want to say Cincinnati. Kyle, okay. you know who else is undefeated? Not getting a lot of attention. You know who's undefeated right now? 
Oregon. I haven't won either. Uh, Alabama beats Mississippi State for, or shuts out Mississippi State four one no. to nothing. Bama good. SEC bad. Yes. Uh, that's my that's my take on that. Florida beats Missouri, another terrible team, forty one to seventeen. Yeah, uh, big old brawl at halftime. Uh, I imagine some suspensions are coming. Mm-hmm. Um, I maybe even some discipline for the coach because he definitely yes. had a hand in that. Dan Mullen is a psychopath. What an idiot. What an idiot. Um, it would be interesting to follow Florida news this week. Yeah, Texas A and M beats Arkansas forty two to thirty one. Are we are we all protect? Are we all pretending Texas A and M is good again? Is that what we're doing right now? No, and Arkansas is a terrible team too. Yeah, Texas A and M is not good. They're fine. They're, they're, they're a top 20 team. They're fine, but let's stop pretending that there's Mm. something more than that, please. Virginia beats North Carolina 44 to 41 and North Carolina made this close. It was a blowout. It was a blowout. North Carolina made a nice little comeback. Wasn't enough. Virginia starting to look pretty good under, uh, Mendenhall. That's who the coach is there now. Right. Uh, starting to look pretty good. Um, yep. It's it's the ACC. What do you want? That's that that's that, that's my summation of it. Mm-hmm. It's it's the ACC. Yep. Oklahoma blows out Texas Tech sixty two to twenty eight. I I I've decided I don't care about Oklahoma for the rest of twenty twenty. Okay. Uh, last one here. BYU, as you were talking about, beats Western Kentucky hmm. forty one to ten. A lot of a lot of great scores against a lot of bad teams is what we're seeing out of BYU right now. Um, I'm giving Cincinnati the nod into the playoff. Kyle, playoff, putting Cincinnati at number four. Ohio State one, Bama two, Clemson three, which I'm surprised by because I had Clemson and Ohio mm-hmm. State as a notch above Bama but- all year. I'm putting Bama at two, dropping Clemson to three. I'm putting Cincinnati at four. Let's do it. Let's get uh, that got, Ohio bowl. I got Notre Dame at four, just based on who they've, who they've played. I know they've haven't looked good at some, some games, but based on who they've played so far, I've, I've got Notre Dame at four and close fifth right there is, is Cincinnati for me. Here, here, here's why I don't believe in Notre Dame. Ian book. All right. That's it. Right. We'll find out next week. That's, that's, that's the tweet. All right. That's the tweet. And that's the episode. I uh, want to thank everyone for joining us on today's show. I want to thank the Mad Canadian and the Iron Bean Coffee Company and all of our patrons for keeping this show rolling. I uh, want to give a plug to the Patreon. You can find that uh, patreon.thesloopcast.com. Uh, you can get a lot of cool benefits there, including premium access to our Discord. Um, you can check out all of our links at thesloopcast.com. That's 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 the new master link. I just bought a DNS name and pointed it at our campsite. That's all it is. It's just a it's a campsite site. Uh, it's all it is is a is a site with links on it. That's all that is. Uh, you can buy merch. Uh, Kyle and I are both wearing Sloopcast merch right now. This is my uh, Harbaugh is Hitler propaganda T-shirt, and <laughs> Kyle's wearing his trusty. Uh, crew parody Buckeye Sloopcast hoodie. And again, check out the Patreon. We're really trying to get things going over at the Patreon. We're trying, we want to do more video stuff. We maybe want to start doing more episodes, but we really, really need um, more support if we want to start doing maybe a third episode or any, but we are also talking about doing a bonus episode made up of just ask Sloopcast questions over that would be a Patreon exclusive. Uh, so that's a thing that might be coming in the near future. Um, basically because these episodes keep getting bigger and we need them to stop, keep getting bigger. And so we're, we're, we're thinking about spilling over into a third episode, but we really need the money to justify the time that that's going to take. So any help you can provide there would, would be fantastic. Again, uh, patreon.thesloopcast.com. And, uh, Kyle, I think, I think that's all the, all of the plugging I feel like doing right now. Mm -hmm. So yeah, what's in Kyle's corner? Kyle's corner. Well, let's go over to Kyle's corner here. Ooh, technology. Uh, Kyle's corner here. 
YouTube, YouTube, YouTube viewers, I hope you appreciated that. We were very excited for that. Should we have been? I don't know. Audio, <laughs> audio only listeners. Kyle switched to a separate camera. <laughs> yes. Uh, big news this week, Jared. Big news, and I'm mentioning it right now because this won't get out until Friday. But Wednesday, Jared. No, we, we, this is this is a Monday episode, Kyle. Yes, I know, but I can't mention it next next episode. Okay. Mac is back. Mac is back. Wednesday, we have all Mac teams in action. Wednesday, so get your multi TVs set here and enjoy some action. Wednesday night. I'm gonna say thank God for my Hans, my ten year old, twenty something inch Cyber Monday Hans spree, which has been mm. my second TV forever <laughs> <laughs> so you got eastern michigan versus kent state western michigan versus K- akron buffalo versus northern illinois ohio versus central michigan ball state against miami and the battle of i-75 of bowling green in toledo amazing that's all yes. I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna say amazing we got maction it's on wednesday nights I love it. I'm down for it. Uh, Kyle, we're going to have to maybe record a bit earlier on Wednesday so that we can soak in that Max and Joy. Yes. Something to consider. All right. That's all. That's all I got today. All right. Uh, tonight's ending. He's going back to the Ohio State hat. Wait, that, was a, that, was a, that was a brief f- trip into the Bowling Green hat. <laughs> I, I, need, I need an Ohio Bobcat hat. Neither. We didn't go to Bowling Green or, but you know, there's, or, or, or OU, but there's, there's, you know, there's stuff there. I'm going to get a Bobcat hat. I need a Bobcat hat. All right. Uh, let's see. Uh, tonight's ending music. Tonight's ending music will be brought to you by, uh, playing to vapors. We're doing a play. I, they're one of my absolute favorite, um, especially of the, uh, independent artist uh, of Ohio. Uh, they're, mathy but they're not super mathy they're very accessible math rock um i want to say it's like it's like i'm gonna say it's like a more accessible more fun version of radiohead so if like radiohead it just feels a little too snooty for you i would like to introduce you to playing to vapors uh like i said a little bit a little bit more fun version so we're gonna do playing to vapors tonight i probably play them as our ending music more than anyone else and that's just because I love them so so much. So be sure to check, be sure to stick around uh, for that. Uh, there are links down in the doobly doo for uh, what the both to their Bandcamp page and a link to the song. And uh, of course, there's also the master link, which is now just thesloopcast.com. And you can check out all that down in the show notes. So with all of that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer and coffee. Listen to local music and, of course, support our local podcasters. Once again, this is Playing to Vapors. I feel like I totally botched. Totally botched the end there. Totally botched it. 100% botch. Ah, uh, YouTube. What do you think? Did I botch the end there? I feel like I botched the end there. We'll get better next time. Get better next time. Uh, yeah, uh, guys, make sure to subscribe at the end of the sh- at, like at the end of the ad read and stuff. You'll see a thing pop over on Kyle's face that will subscribe you either to the Buckeye Scoop or to our YouTube channel, uh, mm-hmm. depending upon where you're watching this. We don't care. Actually, subscribe both. Let's say we don't care where you subscribe. Eh, subscribe both. We don't care where you watch. We don't expect you to watch twice. Uh, we don't care where you watch. Um, either either is fine with us. It really means nothing to us one way or the other. Uh, and then at the end of the episode on my face, uh, you'll see a playlist for all of our season six episodes. So that's my face, Kyle's face. Subscribe. Uh, down here, you see Mad Canadian right here. You'll see uh, information for our Discord server, which, uh, as I pointed out, is now partially public. Uh, Iron Bean Coffee, and of course our master link right there on on the site as well. Those aren't clickable because YouTube's stupid and they don't like me using outside links. 
but <laughs> uh, that's that's just uh, some information for you guys. And of course, the Buckeye Scoop, our 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 boys over at the Buckeye Scoop, uh, the website we are affiliated with. Make sure to watch the uh, the morning the morning scoop with Tom, or at the very least, it's a nice bite sized episode available to you every morning. It's it's a part of my daily routine. It should be a part of your daily routine too. Again, that's the Buckeye Scoop with Tom Orr. Yes. All right. Let's rejoin our audio listeners. Actually, Kyle, um, I'll, I'll, I'll go first this time. I'll go first. Uh, let me scroll up to the show notes. And then after I scroll up to the show notes, then we'll rejoin our audio listeners. One, I'd like to once again thank Playing to Vapors for ending today's show, and I'd like to thank the Iron Bean Coffee Company for supporting today's show financially. Uh, once again, they are a veteran-owned, roast-to-order, micro-batch coffee brewer based out of Toledo, Ohio, technically Perrysburg. But Perrysburg is close enough to Toledo that I feel comfortable just saying Toledo. Um they all of their coffee's fresh. If you get it ground, it's freshly ground. If I mean, obviously, uh, even if you don't get it ground, it's freshly roasted. They they do not roast the beans. They do not roast the beans until you order the beans. These have not been sitting on a grocery store shelf for weeks or months. These beans have not been in a warehouse or in some giant tub waiting for you to buy them already roasted. No. These are not roasted until you order them. They are fresh. If if you're, if you're like me and you want to buy them whole bean, you can buy them whole bean just to get that even extra level of freshness. But even if you're getting them ground, even if you're buying your coffee ground, know that it's still freshly ground. You get free shipping uh, on any order over $50. They have a lot of coffee to choose from. If you're looking for which coffee might be your coffee, they do offer a six coffee sampler pack. Uh, I, 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 ha- I actually bought one, but I, I don't have any of those bags in here. All those bags are in my kitchen. I should have brought at least one to show you one of the sampler bags. Um, and yeah, it's like I said, it's a veteran owned, you're supporting veterans. It's Ohio owned, you're supporting a local Ohio business and it's all fair trade certified. So you don't have to have any sort of moral quandaries about where your coffee beans come from, which is an issue. You can do your independent research on that. Like coffee bean stuff, it can get real ugly Mm -hmm. (laughs) Um, in, in South America. Know that these are fair trade and they are sourced. Uh, directly from a bunch of them, not all of them, are sourced directly from farms, single source coffees, and they're also USDA certified organic. So it's it's a great coffee company with incredible morals, with inc- incredible integrity, again, supporting veterans, supporting Ohio-based local companies, and also supporting farmers in Colombia and Honduras and all the other places that they get their coffee from, making sure that those farmers are being treated correctly. So you can find all of that at ironbeancoffee.com. Once again, that is Iron Bean Coffee, America's local coffee roaster. This episode of the Super is also brought to you by the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company. Don't let the word Canadian fool you. This, is an, this <laughs> one is also an Ohio-based company, too. A Mad Canadian... What else haven't we said? Many, many seasonings that the <laughs> we've Mad said Canadian it all at this point. The Mad Canadian BBQ.com. Check out all the great seasonings over there. Um, we'll point out the old fashioned here. It's one of his most interesting spice to date. Um, he worked on a mimic to the classic drink, and they believe they've nailed it. It's sweet, bourbony, and has the right kick of better bitter. Um, if you want something more, um, Traditional, go with the Kerry steak. One of my favorites goes just on just about everything. It's a classic seasoning with a with their own twist and a name that that fits better. Or you can go with the Brits blend. It's a uh, it's a very versatile seasoning, mainly you that you would find for like in chili. Uh, it's one of those great. Uh, right amount of heat and savory and goes great with uh those for like uh for 
fall meals, perfect time right now, uh, such as chili I mentioned too, or chili, potato salad, or taco, potato salad, tacos, or tacos. Yes. nachos, anything Southwest. That's 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 your uh, that's your cheat code for anything Southwest right there. Yep. Uh, uh, check it. Check out all the other great seasonings over at themadcanadianbbq.com. Make sure you use the promo code SLOOPCAST10 at checkout for 10% off your entire order. Mad Canadian Barbecue Company, where they have your butt covered. And once again, to our YouTube listeners, my face right now should have a season six playlist on it. Kyle's face uh, has the subscribe button on it. We Again, we don't care. Buckeye scoop or our, we don't care where you watch. We don't care where you subscribe. Actually, we care where you subscribe, subscribe both, but we don't care where you watch. Uh, I'm not trying to get a ton of views on our YouTube page necessarily. Um, so watch, watch on the Buckeye scoop YouTube page, watch on this YouTube page. I, I don't care, uh, but subscribe to both. That would be rad. And, uh, maybe like both that would also be rad, but listen wherever you want. I don't care.